I wasn't surprised that Samsung's Odyssey OLED G9 turned out awesome, as Samsung's slate of OLED monitors we've seen this year have already been stunning. What I didn't expect going into this review is that I'd actually be considering adopting the unique 32 by 9 aspect ratio that I wrote off for so many years. At 49 inches diagonally and occupying more space than two 27 inch monitors, the Odyssey OLED G9 seemed too impractical to be usable, and I was certain that it would be hard to recommend alongside some of the best gaming monitors. After spending Spending some time with it though, it's clear that the monitor provides unrivaled productivity prowess and one of the most immersive gaming experiences money can buy. And as someone who uses a 20 by 9 monitor daily, it's going to be hard going back. But hey, before getting into the rest of the review, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed. I already touched on it, but we need to start with the specs. This is a 49 inch 32 by 9 monitor, which if you can spot it, is basically two 16 by 9 monitors stitched together. It is a dual 1440p resolution or 5120 by 1440, and it's OLED with certification through Vase's Display HDR True Black 400. Unlike the previous version, this monitor has a subtle 1800R curve and a refresh rate of 240 hertz. Samsung also claims a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio and a response time of 0.03 milliseconds, but Neither of those really matter too much given that this is an OLED panel. Finally, the monitor retails for $1,800, but I've commonly seen it as low as $1,400 or even $1,300. With the specs done, let's get the other obvious point out of the way. The Odyssey OLED G9 looks amazing. Like, the screen looks great, sure, uh, but the design of the monitor overall is stunning. I'm a huge fan of Samsung's Odyssey design this year, which combines a stark silver frame with just enough flair to let you know that this is a gaming monitor. It's an entirely metal design with a slim silver frame, and that's a huge plus over Samsung's previous version of this monitor. It had a chunky plastic back that made the display feel extra large, and it's already huge. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a big monitor, but the slim frame along with the subtle 1800R curve makes it feel a lot more manageable on a desk compared to the previous version. Something Samsung carried over from the previous version is the core sync ring. There's a layer of diffuse plastic around where the stand connects to the monitor that holds RGB lighting. You can set this as a static color, but you can also sync it with what's on your screen. In a dark room playing Alan Wake 2, the extra bit of lighting did a ton to draw me into the game. Still, the core sync ring is fairly dim, so you won't notice the effect in brightly lit rooms. Samsung includes a hefty metal stand in the box that doesn't take up too much extra desk space. The stand is great, but unsurprisingly, it doesn't offer a ton of room for adjustment. You have a narrow window of height adjustment and about 15 degrees of tilt, but that's it. Thankfully, Samsung includes a VESA adapter in the box, allowing you to mount the monitor for more flexibility and positioning. Now, I was a little worried about the Odyssey OLED G9 after reviewing the Odyssey OLED G8 earlier this year. Make sure to check out a review of that. But that monitor relied exclusively on mini connections for the HDMI and DisplayPort cables. That's thankfully not the case here. You have full-size HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4 ports, along with a micro HDMI 2.1 port. These are all recessed on the back too, making cable management super easy. The same isn't true for the integrated USB hub. You have three USB ports, but they're all USB-C. Most peripherals still aren't using USB-C cables just yet, so a single USB-A port would have gone a long way here. Still, it's certainly better than micro HDMI and mini display ports, like the one on the OLED G8, but still something to note. Now, reviewing the Odyssey OLED G8 did clue me in on the exceptional image quality I could expect here, and the Odyssey OLED G9 delivers. This is one of the best OLED displays you can buy with fantastic color coverage, great color accuracy, and the deep contrast and inky blacks that OLED panels are known for. But let's get some numbers out of the way. In SDR, the monitor covered 100% of sRGB, 98% of DCI-P3, and 95% of Adobe RGB. For those unfamiliar with color spaces, those are some of the highest numbers we've ever recorded for a monitor, showcasing excellent coverage. The color error was a bit higher in the Odyssey OLED G8, coming in at 1.36. Still, that's fine for basic color work, even if you'd want to calibrate it for any more serious work. Contrast is, well, 
infinite due to the fact that OLED produces perfect black levels, but as we've seen with displays like the LG Ultra Gear OLED 27, the trade-off is peak brightness. For a 10% window, the Odyssey OLED G9 peaked at 237 nits, which is a hair below what we've seen with displays like the Alienware 34 QD OLED. I was able to hit 283 nits in HDR with a smaller 5% window, which is a little better. Switching over to HDR, color accuracy unsurprisingly takes a dip with an average error of just over four. That's not the worst we've seen for HDR color accuracy, but there's no doubt that the HDR experience is for media consumption, not creation. Contrast was once again excellent, though peak brightness was just barely over 200 nits for a 10% window on screen. The image quality on the Odyssey OLED G9 is stunning, but you can get that with 16 by nine monitors like the Asus ROG PG27 AQDM. The unique aspect ratio is where the Odyssey OLED G9 really shines. It's a productivity machine, giving you ample screen real estate to multitask. Now, my preferred way to work is with a 21 by nine display work, and I have two windows side by side, but the Aussie OLED G9 takes that idea to the extreme. You're essentially getting two 16 by nine displays just without all the problems of most multi-monitor setups. You can expand this idea further too, stacking up windows horizontally to have three or four large views at once. The Aussie OLED G9 is a massive display, sure, but it actually saves you some space compared to a traditional multi monitor setup, all while providing the same level of screen space for productivity. But let's not lie, this is a gaming monitor first and foremost, and that's probably what you're gonna use it for. And I'm here to tell you the gaming experience is great. I truly mean this. I've never had a more immersive gaming experience than on the Aussie OLED G9. The massive 32 by nine aspect ratio captures your peripheral vision and it just does not let you go. Even at like a solid viewing distance, you have no other option but to absorb the game world you're experiencing. Uh, funnily enough, one of the first games I booted up was the recent Alan Wake 2, which I had to turn off about half an hour because it was it was just a little too scary in that format. It's not remotely close to VR, okay? But it provides that same feeling of immersion. The Odyssey OLED G9 wrestles your senses away, sucking you into games in a way that even 21 by nine monitors just can't manage. I spent nearly an hour driving around Night City in Cyberpunk 2077, ignoring all of my various objectives, just riding on the high of the feeling of living in this dense futuristic world. It brings you in that much. The unique aspect ratio is what matters most, but the Aussie OLED G9 has plenty of gaming grunt otherwise. The 240 hertz display delivers incredible motion clarity with the ultra low response times of OLED, making titles like Doom Eternal feel ruthlessly responsive. FreeSync Premium Pro is also here, giving you variable refresh rate regardless of your graphics card. You should, however, keep in mind how demanding this resolution is. The monitor has a 5120 by 1440 resolution, and if you do the math, that's not far off of 4K. It has 7.3 million pixels, while 4K has 8.3 million. For reference, a 21 by nine monitor with a 3440 by 1440 resolution is just shy of 5 million, while a 1440p monitor has about 3.6 million. You'll definitely want a PC equipped for 4K gaming if you plan on picking up the Odyssey OLED G9. Now, when the monitor is in its prime form, there is nothing else even remotely close to it. The problem is that it often won't be in its prime form. Now, the unique aspect ratio leads to consistent immersion breaking scenarios where it becomes clear just how silly playing games on a 32 by nine monitor is. It's not just cutscenes either. Every time I opened the menu in Marvel's Spider-Man, the UI looked cramp on the screen as it just quickly adjusted to the typical 16 by nine aspect ratio. There are also plenty of games that just simply won't support the 32 by nine aspect ratio. Indie titles, for example, like Tunic are almost universally locked to 16 by nine, forcing you to either run the game in window mode or sacrifice about half of your screen real estate to black bars. This can definitely come up in larger games too, such as Overwatch 2, where 32 by nine resolutions just aren't supported. In addition, the wide field of view can actually work against the gaming experience. Well, again, this isn't VR, but the Aussie OLED G9 can give you a little bit of motion sickness, depending on the game. I mean, I don't wanna play it up too much. It's really not that big of a deal, but it can come up in games with extreme motion blur and heavy vignetting where long gameplay sessions can cause some queasiness. And that's something I've never experienced with another monitor. For gaming, the Odyssey OLED G9 is an experience monitor. If you spend a few hours with it, you'll be floored by the immersion and quality. It's a little tougher to settle in for long gameplay sessions though. The black bars for games that don't support 32 by nine are very distracting, much more so than even a 21 by nine monitor. So you'll often have to settle for playing games in windowed mode. That said, 
The worst experience you'll find on the Aussie OLED G9 is simply what you'd get with a 16 by nine monitor, while the best experience is far ahead of what you'd find on a standard display. And as I'll get to next, there are plenty of ways to take advantage of the extra screen real estate. I just spent a lot of time talking about how 32 by nine is impractical for gaming, but with a little bit of effort, it can actually be a huge asset. A lot of that comes down to Samsung MultiView, which lets you split the screen to display different sources. It works great on the Aussie OLED G9, and it's a feature you want to take advantage of in a lot of cases. The only downside here is that Samsung doesn't support a ton of apps from the built-in OS for MultiView. You're mainly limited to YouTube and Samsung TV+, Plus, but the upside here is that you can add the built-in web browser as a source, so you can basically unlock any app with a little bit of effort. The biggest problem with this setup is actually finding something to occupy the rest of the screen. In those situations where you can't fill the full 32 by nine aspect ratio, you'll want something else to fill the remainder of the screen and it's possible you won't have a second source. Samsung thankfully allows you to mirror the screen on your phone or laptop. I mean, Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows are all supported, which gives you a ton of options to take advantage of the rest of the display. Now, as I kind of alluded to, the Aussie OLED G9 is isn't just a monitor. It includes Samsung's Tenzin TV operating system, giving you access to streaming apps like Netflix and Hulu, uh, Samsung Game Hub for Xbox Game Pass and GeForce Now, and even some live TV with Samsung TV+. Plus. That's not really what's important here though. You probably won't use the built-in apps very much. I mean, this is a high-end gaming monitor that you'll probably connect to a high-end gaming PC, but the OS opens up Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections. A monitor update is just an option in the menu, not a frustrating process involving a USB drive, and Bluetooth allows you to connect a controller or a keyboard and mouse if you want to navigate the OS without the included remote. It opens up a ton of display options as well. You can quickly access things like Samsung MultiView with the remote through the quick access menu, as well as dig into picture settings that you wouldn't normally find on a monitor's on-screen display. Even without features like color calibration with sports smartphones, controlling the monitor this way is leagues ahead of a traditional OSD. Samsung built some hardware for this experience as well. The built-in speakers are surprisingly loud and they do a great job at positioning audio and games with surround sound. You'll still want dedicated speakers or headphones for the best audio experience, but the speakers sound excellent compared to what you normally find on gaming monitors, if you find speakers at all. But okay, on to some closing thoughts. The Aussie OLED G9 isn't for everyone. It's for the most intense PC gamers who want peak immersion in games, ample room for productivity, and a feature set that you just cannot find anywhere else. And it delivers on all fronts, all while producing one of the best images you can find on a gaming monitor. Those looking for those types of PC experiences know that they usually carry some unforeseen quirks though, and the Osceola G9 is definitely no exception. As mentioned, 32 by nine doesn't play nicely with all games, and the deep immersion can quickly be thrown off when a cutscene plays. Still, when the baseline experience is simply what you'd get with a 16x9 monitor, the Aussie OLED G9 can scale much higher. Now, we need to talk a little bit about pricing before I get out of here, though. Samsung asks $1,800 at list price for the display, but I would not buy it for that much. It's not so much that it's overpriced, I mean, there really isn't another monitor quite like this one, but that it frequently goes on sale. Uh, at the time of recording, it's available for $1,400, putting it within spitting distance of some of the 21x9 QD OLED monitors we've seen. And at that price, it's an absolute steal for high-end PC gamers, assuming you can adopt the unique aspect ratio. But I want to know your thoughts. Is OLED enough to make 32 by 9 worth it? Or do you want something that's just a little more manageable? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you in the next video.